Hello, this is Michael Fry. I've just released my new ebook and video package called Landscapes in Lightroom 5. There are eight video tutorials that go along with that ebook, but I also wanted to give you this free bonus tutorial about using the arrow keys in the develop module in Lightroom. Now you may already know that you can hold your mouse over any of these sliders in the develop module and use the arrow keys, not over the name of the tool, but over the slider. So if I hold my mouse over the exposure slider, for example, and press the up arrow, that increases the exposure. And each time I press the down arrow, that decreases the exposure. Same thing works with contrast or highlights or any of these. And sometimes it's easier to fine tune an adjustment using the arrow keys rather than dragging a slider. Now the increment of the adjustment varies with the tool, right? So for exposure, if I press the up arrow or down arrow, it changes the exposure by one-tenth of a stop each time, right? So each time I press the arrow, you can see it changes it by a tenth of a stop. And each time I press the arrow with my mouse over the contrast slider, it changes the contrast in increments of five. Now you can vary that. If I hold down the shift key with my mouse over the exposure slider, hold down the shift key and use the up arrow, it changes the exposure by a third of a stop each time I press that arrow key. And if I do the same thing, hold down the shift key with a contrast slider, every time I press the up or down arrow, it changes it by an increment of 20. On the other hand, if I really want to fine tune something, I can hold down the option key and that decreases the increment. Right? So with contrast, I hold down the option key, it changes it by just one every time I hit the arrow. And with exposure, it changes the increment by just 0 0.02 every time I hit the up or down arrow key. Now you don't want to hit the left or right arrows, okay? That just takes you to a different image. So it's the up or down arrow keys that work with this. And the specific increments vary depending on which tool you're using. But in all cases, using the shift key while you press the up or down arrow increases the increment of change and using the option or alt key decreases the increment of change. So this doesn't work with the point curve okay using the arrow keys does nothing but it does work with the parametric curve in Lightroom so I can hold my mouse over the curve itself press the up arrow or down arrow to change the curve or of course uh, hold my mouse over one of these sliders if I go down to the HSL panel I can for example hold my mouse over the blue saturation slider and then hit the up arrow. I'll hit it quite a few times to increase the saturation of the blues or press the down arrow to bring it back down. I can also do this with the target mode, right? So if I click on this little target mode symbol next to saturation, hold my mouse over the blue sky. Uh, I can click and drag, and if I drag up, that increases the saturation of the blues, and if I drag down, that decreases it. But also, if I just hold my mouse with this target mode selected, hold my mouse over the blue sky, and press the up arrow, I'll increase the saturation, and then press the down arrow to decrease the saturation. And you'll notice that is changing the saturation of blues, but also a little bit of the purples because it thinks the sky is mostly blue but has a little bit of purple in it. Okay, now you might also know that you can hold your mouse over the histogram and actually drag on the histogram itself to change these sliders, right? If I drag in the middle of the histogram, that changes the exposure, pushes the exposure slider up or down. If I drag up here, that changes highlights, and down here, shadows, and so forth. But, as you might expect, I can also just hold my mouse over, say, the middle of the histogram, press the up arrow, and that increases exposure, 
press the down arrow and that decreases exposure. Now the arrow keys also work with the adjustment brush as well as the graduated filter and the radial filter that's new in Lightroom 5. Uh, I'm going to click on the adjustment brush here and I have one adjustment brush pin with this image. You can see that I have increased exposure, contrast, and clarity over uh, an area in the center of the photograph. Now just as we did in the basic panel, I can hold my mouse over one of these sliders and hit the up arrow or down arrow and use the shift or option key to change the increment. But there's something else that I can do here with a pin selected like this one. If I just hold my mouse anywhere over the image itself, doesn't matter where, and hit the up or down arrow keys, I'll change all the sliders that I've already adjusted, right? So I'm going to hold my uh, arrow key up so you can kind of see those moving and then down. So if you, if you look over here as I'm doing this, so I'm, I'm pressing the up arrow and then now the down arrow, you can see it's moving all three sliders. So if you ever want to adjust two or more sliders at the same time, that's a quick way of doing it. Okay, let's look at a different image. Now this is a photograph with a distinct horizon and it looks pretty straight, but it might be just a little bit low on the left hand side. So I'm going to click on the crop tool and I can drag this angle slider, right, to change the angle and straighten the horizon. Or I can also hold my mouse outside the image area and you can see it turns into a curved double-sided arrow and when I see that I know I can drag and as I do so that changes the angle. Both of those though can be a little bit twitchy. So I'm going to reset that and then just hold my mouse over the angle slider and once again use the arrow keys if I go down it angles it one way if I go up it angles it the other way um, maybe right about there or maybe not quite so far. Let's say there. That looks good. Now there's one more use of the arrow keys that I want to show you. I'm going to zoom in and you can see that there's a car here. So I want to get rid of that and I'm going to click on the spot removal tool and then just click on the car and Lightroom automatically picks a spot to clone or heal from, right? In this case, it's heal. And it did a really good job. You know, it matches up actually perfectly. But let's say it didn't. And actually, pretty often, Lightroom doesn't pick the right spot automatically. So let's say it picked a spot down here, which doesn't quite line up. So I can drag the source point upward and try to get a better alignment. But to fine tune this, sometimes it's easier just to use the arrow keys again. So with the source point selected, I can select actually either the destination point here or the source point here. In this case, I want the source point. And then I can use the arrow keys to move that up like that or down or actually left to right as well. This is an instance where you can use the left and right arrow keys. But here I'm going to use the up and down arrow keys and just try to line that up. That looks just about perfect there. And I'm going to hit the H key to hide those circles. And that looks good. So that's it. Once again, there's a lot more in my new ebook, Landscapes in Lightroom 5. And also, there are a bunch of free video tutorials on my blog. If you go to my blog, michaelfry.com slash blog and scroll down on the right hand side to categories click on video tutorials and you'll find all of my free video tutorials so I hope you found this video helpful and thanks very much for watching